So before we begin, I just want to say thank you, Festival of Media, for putting us after Jason Miller. <laughs> Cheers for that. Really freaking <laughs> appreciated. Thank you very much. So no pressure. Um, so yes, I'm Shula Sinclair, and I'm Global Strategy Partner at MEC London, and I've just been presented with a very hard act to follow. Um, Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Len Calvert. I'm the founder and CEO of Effective. We're a programmatic media and technology company. We are focused on personalizing brand messages to consumers across the consumer journey. Now, we were advised to occupy opposite ends of the stage because it's really rare that a media and a tech agency actually share a stage. So this way, we won't actually start fighting. Uh, but we were asked by Festival of Media to present our shared thoughts on how to optimize and personalize the consumer journey. So we've done that with three very pithy points. Thank you, Shula. So number one, <clears throat> short-term gain doesn't always mean the long-term gain. Personalizing consumer journey is clearly a hot topic currently. Every single brand that we work with is talking to us about how we go about doing it, and why wouldn't it be? All media becoming digital, digital becoming programmatic, programmatic becoming addressable. So clearly the ability to personalize to the consumer across their journey is there. However, just because we can, does it mean that we should? Let's look at what's possible. As it stands right now, as a brand, you can take search behavior, you can take the content we read, what we share, what device we're on, what geography we're in, all in real time to personalize the messages to every single consumer. However, just because we can doesn't mean that we should. And we say this to brands all the time. Every single brand we work with, we always ask them, you have to consider what are you trying to do two or three years from now? Just because you can act on it now, just because you can measure it right now, doesn't actually mean you should do it right now. Decisions you make, are going to have an impact two or three years down the line. What technology you use, what infrastructure you have, what DMP you use, what's your strategy around ID management, what team you have, what talent you have, what KPIs you're chasing, how you look to measure it. Every single one of these is absolutely critical that you have a view and a vision and a plan on this. So just because you can act right now doesn't mean that you should. So. Glenn is essentially saying, just because you can deliver short-term results, it doesn't mean you should lose sight of the long-term focus. And the same applies to the consumer journey. And I'm brilliantly going to demonstrate the impact of the long-term investment in your consumer journey. I'm going to ask for a little participation. Imagine that money was no object, and you could buy any car you wanted tomorrow. Hands up if you know what car that would be. Come on. <laughs> what do you reckon, Glenn? <laughs> well, there's about five people there, but I think it's probably like most of them. <laughs> OK. So essentially, we would urge everybody we work with to look at the entire consumer journey as opposed to the part of the consumer journey that is easiest to measure. If you look at the purchase cycle of your average car, you're actually looking at three years. And most of those three years are happening here, the most difficult point in time to measure. OK? So just because it's difficult to measure and attribute a purchase decision to what you do in everyday life in the passive stage, it doesn't mean that it's not important to your business. In fact, MEC research um, I think nearing 300,000 individual purchase journey studies across multiple markets and categories demonstrates that 56% of all, decision per, all decisions made are effectively made before the trigger occurs. Now, that is a lot less when it comes to processed cheese and a lot higher when it comes to something like a car. But at the same time, it's incredibly important to ensure that you're not just focused on the optimization. Uh, just a brief example, Jet2. Jet2 is a UK client. Historically, have focused on the two-week window, optimizing that two-week window of decision-making 
up until the point of purchase and neglecting the remaining 50 weeks in a year where people are dreaming and fantasizing about their holiday. Working with MEC, they flipped their investment. They invested 80% in that everyday brand building, inspiring passive stage to see an increase of 22% in sales year on year and an increase of 74% in brand awareness. Point number two, data. We've been asked to talk about personalization. We would posit to you that data can be used in two simple ways. One is to identify correlations to remove friction from purchase. And two, to identify insights to create friction and disrupt when you need your brand to get noticed. An example of how we remove friction, this is an example of some communication that we do for Marriott to drive conversion to purchase. These are some of the factors we take into account when we tailor the message that is served to our audience. The objective here is to make sure that the purchase decision is as easy and as seamless as possible for people who are browsing and making that final purchase decision. What they're not doing is this. What they're not doing with that data is uncovering the insight that disrupts, that drives behavior change, and drives brand reappraisal. And we need to recognize that marketeers that there's space for both, and we shouldn't just be focusing on one over the other. Exactly. So over two years ago, all the work that we did with gaming brands clearly showed that half of, more than half the audience were actually female despite what the brief might be from the agency and the brand that we should be targeting males. Now, clearly the data shows from content viewed, content shared, content read, that more than half of these profiles are actually female. Now, we're asked to use this data to personalize at the end of the, the journey, at the point of transaction. How can we actually bring this further through the organization, further through the strategy, further through the planning, and actually, actually own a creative brief and own a strategy? Point number three, personalized is not always optimized. So the subject is personalizing the consumer journey. However, personalization is, is just a tactic. It's, it's not a strategy, okay? Every single person in this room has a different view and a different opinion on how far is too far. Everyone's completely different. Every single brand has to have an idea on where their line is. If you're wanting to personalize a consumer journey, you have to be aligned and clear on how far is too far for your brand. So, thoughts on, on this? Taking my name and putting it into the creative execution. So, too far? not far enough, works for this brand. Now this brand, obviously a young, challenger brand, trying to target a younger demographic, so they've probably slightly missed out in, in reaching me. It works for them. It won't work for every sector or every, for every brand. I think we agreed that it would be downright creepy for a travel brand to feature your surname in communication, even though it's technically possible. Here, we've got some smarter executions of travel brands personalizing across the consumer journey. Understanding based on search behavior, geographics, what they're reading, what they're sharing, where they are in that customer journey, and changing the message accordingly. Understanding where they're looking to go, personalizing the destination. If they're in the awareness stage, research phase, or actually going to do the purchase, and changing the message accordingly. On the far right hand side you can see understanding that just at the point of purchase maybe a bit of time pressure to get them to convert will assist. Do you recognize this guy? I'm a big fan. So if Glenn was talking about the need to draw a line around personalization, the fact that you can personalize doesn't mean you should. I would also venture 
that walking away from personalization also has a role in the marketing mix. Case in point, the inimitable Michael Dubin, who came out in 2012 and told us how his blades were effing great. Okay, now what I find interesting with the Dollar Shave Club case study is that a week before, a week before, this came out from a company called Dorco. And Dorco talked about how they catered for every type of consumer profile, every market, and they essentially tried to address and personalize their offering to every possible consumer out there. The reality is, and we all know that, that Dollar Shave Club ended selling for a billion dollars to Unilever. Well done, Michael. I really want to be your friend. And Dorco is not a commonplace name for consumers. The irony of it all is that Dollar Shave Club actually sells Dorco blades, which is really curious, and shows how a decision between personalizing and accommodating everything your audience is looking for, as opposed to making a stand as a brand and saying, this is what you stand for, result in very different outcomes. So essentially, three points. We kept it super, super pithy <laughs> in order to uh, fit within the time. Um, but essentially, we are saying, just because you can measure for the short term, Please, 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 let's not lose focus on the long term and the link between investing in the passive everyday stage to ultimately drive those purchase decisions. The second point we made was think about how you're using your data. There are essentially two ways in the purchase journey you can use your data. One to remove friction from the purchase decision and one to create friction and disrupt when you're trying to establish your brand. And last but not least, establish the line. The, what is too personal for your brand? Establish the line that is right for your category and your brand, and don't pass it. And, and effectively find the right time to actually walk away from personalization altogether. So four considerations, because we couldn't net out on three. Sorry about that. But four considerations to leave you with, and then any questions if you like. So number one. Invest for the long term. The decisions that you're going to make right now, just because you can act, just because you can personalize the consumer journey, take a step back. The decisions you make right now are critical for thinking two or three years down the line. Invest for the long term. Have a plan. Two, there's a time for your brand to glide your consumer through to the purchase decision and remove friction, and there's a time for it to disrupt. Recognize the need to invest in both and the balance between two sides of that investment. Number three, together we stand, divide we fall. There is currently a wall between the creative and the data, the brands and the vendors, even the brand teams and the DR teams inside, these eight, inside the brand. If you want to personalize the consumer journey, you have to break down that wall. They have to be connected. And last but not least, you can define your consumer journey by category. Those two years, in the cycle that it takes to make your new car purchase decision are critical to the ultimate outcome. We have data that validates that. That said, if you're an insurance company, it could be that you need to invest it all in optimization and ensuring you're at the right place at the right time. Understand where your category and your brand sits within this model and invest accordingly. That's it from us. Let Thank us you know very much. if there are any questions.